I sat down at my computer here in July, here in Central California, where it was too hot to go outside, and I was playing both Daclands and Cultist Simulator, where, you know, both of those games involve, like, dragging a variety of cards, like this blank white card here around the screen. So I was thinking, you know, how do we go about doing that? Thinking through it at a high level, the mouse is dragged around the screen, and then you can hover over the card. When the mouse's left button is clicked down while hovering, you start the drag. So it's like gluing these two pieces together, right? So as you continue to hold down the mouse and drag around the screen, the card follows along with it, stuck to that anchor point. When that mouse button is released, we unlink the two, so stopping the drag altogether. When we think about how to go about this, we need to look at the data. So what data represents these objects that we have? So we need to understand the data because we need to know what variables to change or what variables to set up. So we have a single card. Our card has a width, a height, and then an XY position. In this case, we're assuming the position is at the top left point of the card. And all of these numbers represent the number of pixels for each value. In addition to the card, we also have other variables or other data, right? So we have a mouse position. This is the XY coordinate as well of the mouse, similar to our XY coordinate for our card. Then we have the value of the left mouse button. So is it clicked down or not? It's a Boolean, true or false. Now that we've considered the data, how will the actual code work? So think through what events are going to happen, and then what data needs to change in response to those events. So let's write it out in uh, plain English. So if a card is static, sitting, doing nothing, and we decide to hover the mouse, then click the left button, we need to do something to say that the card is now in a drag mode or that it is now being dragged. Once the card is in some sort of drag mode or drag state, then while we're still holding down the mouse button, we need to update the card's XY position every frame so that it follows the mouse around the screen. And then otherwise, if the mouse's button is released, then we go back to static mode where the card does nothing. Another way to think about this that may be a little bit easier to think about is a state machine. So looking at this, we have two states, static and dragging. There will be a trigger to move from static to dragging if there is a mouse hovering over the card, which we'll call a collision, and if the mouse button is pressed down. Once we are in the dragging state, the card's position will be updated, and then there is another trigger to move from a dragging state back to static if the mouse button is released. And then finally, let's move this to code. There's lots of ways to represent state machines in code, but for something this simple, a switch statement is a nice way to go. So this code would be running in some sort of step event or update event. It would fire every frame. We check if our code is in a static state, and then we check we check to see if we meet the condition to trigger a move to dragging. That is if there is a collision and the mouse button is pressed, then we can simply set the card's state. Then if we are in a dragging state, we will update the card's position to match the mouse's position. Then we'll also need to check if there is a trigger to move back to static. So in that case, the trigger would be if the mouse button is released. So let's take a look at a practical example of this using GameMaker. I'm working to start with this simple GameMaker project. There is one room and there is only a single instance of an object in that room. That object is just a simple bootstrapper object. It's got four different events in it. So we have a room start event, which isn't doing anything super fancy. It is just setting the background to a dark color. We're also setting a default font. In our crate event, we're setting up all of our data that we need related to the card or the, the dragging function. So what we've got in our object 
we're going to be tracking the state of the dragon. So the way I've gone about it here is I created an instance variable for this object called dragon. And then it's going to be in either two state. So it'll either be undefined or I'm just going to set it to the struct of the card for the card while it's actually being dragged. It may also be useful to have the dragging offset. So this is going to be the mouse's position when it starts the drag in context of the overall card's position. So the card's position will be in the top left corner of the card. If we click, say, somewhere in the middle of that card, then we want to track the width and the height between the starting position and where our mouse sits so that when we move the mouse, we can move it offset by this uh, this dragging offset because otherwise it'll automatically snap the top left of the card to the mouse's position. Then we'll be tracking hovered. So in this case, I want it to see if we're hovering over a card so that I can highlight it. And then the card struct data. So it'll be an ID that I just want to display on the screen, XY coordinates, a width and a height as part of size, and then these style attributes, which mostly just relate to the color of the card itself. For the draw event, it looks a lot more complicated than it is. I'm essentially just drawing all of this instead of using a sprite. So I'm depending on the draw round rec extension functions. What I'm doing here, you'll see, is I'm drawing a couple of borders and then I'm also drawing a rectangle. So the two uh, functions that are drawing the borders and then I'm using different colors depending on what part of the card I'm drawing. Down here, I'm also drawing some text and then I am drawing a debugging box that floats above the top of the card so that I can see the card's position and its dragging state. I won't go through this line by line, but feel free to add something in the comments if you have questions about how this gets drawn. If you want to keep it simple for yourself, you can simply just draw a rectangle or you can just use or you can just use a sprite. At this point, if you boot up the game, you should at least be able to see your card getting drawn onto the screen. In the step function, we start with pulling variables out for the mouse's left button. So I'm actually just storing this in two separate variables for if the mouse is currently being held down under left clicked, and then if the mouse button has been released or not under left released. I'm also setting our hovered variable. I'm using this get hovered function. The method I'm using here is to just loop over this card's array and check every individual card for if the mouse is hovering over that card and it uses this point and rectangle function to check the mass position with the rectangle's coordinate. Disclaimer that this is not an efficient way to do collisions, especially if we had a large number of cards getting drawn on the screen. Then we get to set up our little state machine here for the dragging state. So I'm going to convert self-dragging into a bool. So remember, it'll be either undefined or it will be a reference to the card struct that we've set up in create. If it's undefined, we're going to go into the false case, which will be our static case. From there, we can check for our one trigger. So that is if we want to move to the dragging state, which the condition is, are we hovering over the card? And has the mouse left button been clicked down? So if yep, then we set our self-dragging variable to the card struct, which is in self-hovered. And then we grab that dragging offset so that we can adjust the 
card's position correctly later on. Then, in the other case, if we are in a dragging state, which in that case, self.dragging will have been set, and the it'll evaluate as a Boolean, it'll evaluate as Boolean true, then we go into the true case. Here, we update the card's position. So remember, the card's coordinate data is stored in self.dragging at the moment. We update it to uh, be at the point of the mouse minus that dragging offset that we set up. Then we check for our transition condition to go from dragging back to static. In this case, it's if we lift that mouse button up, so if left is released, then we set our variables back to undefined. So the same way we had them in create, and then when this runs in the next step, then uh, it'll evaluate back to the false case. And that's it, let's run our game. If we hover, we now see those colors popping up because of the way the draw function is set up. I'm checking the hover to variable and changing the draw color based off of that. And then if we keep our mouse button held down and we drag around, you can see our card following along. Also, if you just click down and you don't do anything, you'll also see that little debugging text above the top of the card where we have set and said, are you in a dragging state or not? So as soon as I press it down, you can see self.dragging gets set to something besides undefined. Then we lift it up, fires off our trigger to go back to static, and then it leaves the card there. It's no longer updating its position. If you want to challenge yourself a bit, try expanding this out and add more cards. So obviously we're just using one card. Try to add two or more cards onto the screen where you can drag any of them not just the single card. And thanks for watching.